Chapter 2 India's Foreign Policy In the last chapter, we learnt the meaning of foreign policy and the factors that affect it. In this chapter, we are going to study the background and features of our foreign policy. India's Foreign Policy Background India's foreign policy has been influenced by the ideas of peace and tolerance which come from our ancient history. The Indian culture teaches us that the whole world is like a family. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam This is expressed through our foreign policy. The principles of international peace and understanding which emerged from India's freedom struggle have also influenced our foreign policy. On 15th August 1947, India got her independence. As an independent nation, it was necessary for India to decide her own foreign policy. However, the broad outline of the foreign policy had been decided in the pre-independence period itself. It included the following points. 1. Opposition to colonialism. 2. Cooperation with peace-loving nations. 3. Opposing any distinction on the basis of race or color. 4. Supporting the freedom struggles in other countries. 5. Striving to establish world peace. As the head of the interim government, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru had given a speech on 7th September 1946 in which he had clearly stated the objectives of India's foreign policy. He stressed on the need to formulate an independent foreign policy, not falling prey to the pressures of the other nations. India's Foreign Policy Constitutional Provisions After gaining independence, India started formulating her own independent foreign policy. Protecting the independence of the nation and preserving our territorial integrity are the basic objectives of our foreign policy. Article 51 of the Directive Principles of the Constitution of India guides us about how we should conduct our international affairs and transactions. This article states the principles of our foreign policy. The following objectives are to be achieved through it. 1. To promote international peace and security. 2. To maintain just and honorable relations between nations. 3. To foster respect for international law. 4. To encourage the resolving of international issues peacefully and through tribunals. Some of the main features of India's foreign policy are as follows. Opposition to imperialism and colonialism. Imperialism means disrespect for the freedom and sovereignty of other nations. It also involves domination of the other countries in different ways to promote one's own national interest. Colonialism is also a kind of imperialism. Some countries conquer the territories of other countries on the basis of their strength and establish their dominance over that region. This is called colonialism. Opposition to colonialism and imperialism is a characteristic feature of India's foreign policy. Preserving International Peace India is committed to the principles of peace. India relies on the methods of negotiation and dialogue to resolve international issues. The nature of India's peaceful policy is constructive. The acceptance of a policy of peace does not mean being passive. Rather, it is a concrete endeavor at establishing peace in the world. The preservation of international peace is the core of India's foreign policy. Focus on preserving friendly relations. One of the important features of India's foreign policy is the preservation of friendly relations with all the countries in the world. Friendly relations help to increase the cultural educational and economic give and take between nations. Through the process of helping the other nations in their development, India has focused on preserving the friendly relations. Principles of Panchashil The principles of Panchashil are the pillars of India's foreign policy. 
it is a set of norms to resolve international issues through peaceful methods. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru officially put forth the principles of Panchashil in 1954. These five principles are as follows. 1. Mutual respect for the territorial integrity and sovereignty. 2. Mutual non-aggression. 3. Mutual non-interference in each other's internal affairs. 4. Equality and mutual benefit. 5. Peaceful coexistence. The principles of Panchashil highlight the expectation that no country will put any kind of pressure on another country and will not intervene in its ideological, political or economic matters. Non-alignment Non-alignment does not mean being neutral or indifferent. India's foreign policy is not non-aligned in this negative sense. After the Second World War, Soviet Union and United States of America emerged as the two superpowers. The tense relations between them are referred to as the Cold War. During this period of the Cold War, there was an atmosphere of suspicion and tension in the world. The Soviet Union and the United States of America were both trying to pull the newly emerging independent countries into their camps. Pandit Nehru clearly put forward India's stand by stating that India would not join any camp as she did not wish to be dominated by anyone. Rather, she hoped for cooperation from all countries. This stand of independence and peace taken by India in the context of the Cold War is known as the policy of non-alignment. Thus, non-alignment is another remarkable feature of India's foreign policy. The Non-Aligned Movement After the Second World War, the newly emerging independent countries in the continents of Asia and Africa supported the idea of non-alignment and it became an important movement. This movement started in 1961 under the leadership of the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the President of Yugoslavia, Marshal Tito, the President of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, the President of Indonesia, Sukarno, and the Prime Minister of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah. The Evaluation of the Non-Aligned Movement The Non-Aligned Movement has opposed colonialism, imperialism, and apartheid, racism. It has encouraged the use of peaceful methods in resolving international disputes. India led this movement under the guidance of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Subsequently also, India has been actively supporting the movement. Though the Cold War has ended, this movement continues to be important. The non-aligned movement is based on the eternal values of humanism, international peace and equality. It motivated the less developed countries to come together. Also, it gave a new confidence to such countries to stand with dignity in international politics.